Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. This is Misha Kim from MathWorks Germany. Welcome to this webinar on physical modeling in teaching. Before I introduce today's co-host, I would like to take a minute to motivate today's topic. Why physical modeling in teaching? Well, as an engineering student, you see modeling concepts from the very get-go from the first semester in the first math and physics courses. For example, with the mathematical pendulum or the mass spring damper system. And of course, you see much more with regards to modeling in later semesters in dynamics and controls. In this webinar, we're going to demonstrate two very different modeling approaches and how MathWorks tools can support your course and learning goals. I would now like to introduce my co-host, Sebastian Malak from the German consulting team. Sebastian, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for the warm welcome, Misha. I'd like to add some details on what I do in MathWorks Consulting Services. Besides focusing on modeling and designing physical systems, I also specialize in control design and automation. I enable our industry and research clients to use model-based design more effectively. This means I get to work with innovative technical systems every day, which makes my work very enjoyable. As some of you might already have guessed, the demo is about a rotating inverted pendulum built from Lego parts. The swing up is realized using an energy based controller until the arm of the pendulum reaches a certain state. Thereafter, the states are controlled using a proportional gain controller, enabling it to react to a certain amount of disturbance. To get a better feeling for our system, I'd like to briefly introduce important components to you. The main mechanical components enable the pendulum to move freely along two degrees of freedom. This allows a vertical rotation between base and arm, as well as a horizontal rotation of the pendulum relative to the arm. Our controller requires two sensors to determine the current system states and movement. To activate the system, we mounted a motor into the base, which drives the motion of the arm. To design a controller, you might want to have a virtual representation of the pendulum, which will be our main focus for our presentation. First, we'll introduce you to the traditional approach, using basic MATLAB and Simulink. Next, we'll introduce you to Simscape and Simmechanics, which enables you to model physical systems more easily and efficiently. Then, Misha and I will discuss our thoughts concerning model complexity and visualization. At the end of the presentation, we'll share our conclusions and provide you with some really great resources. The first approach we demonstrate I refer to as the traditional approach, which is essentially using pen and paper with a computer. This is something students typically see and learn in the first math and physics courses. Think, for example, the motion of the mathematical pendulum or the spring mass damper system. In this case, you try to come up with the system's description. On the right-hand side picture, that means you define system parameters, such as lengths, masses, moments of inertia, and you need to define and work with reference frames, oftentimes rotating reference frames. And once you have come up with the system description, you can start with the analysis. Here we show the analysis with an euler lagrange approach, which means the first thing you need to do is to come up with the kinematics of the problem. And based on the kinematics, you can then compute the system Lagrangian, difference between kinetic and potential energies. The Lagrangian you then plug into the euler lagrange equation to derive the differential equation. You can either do this with pen and paper for linear systems or you use MATLAB and Simulink to solve the differential equations symbolically as well as numerically. Using tools also allows you to create plots and add animations for analysis. Oftentimes this dynamics analysis is only the first part of developing a controller which you might even want to deploy to hardware. One thing to note, we have created an Euler Lagrange tool to automatically derive differential equations. We're going to see this tool in action in just a second, and for this, I'm going to step over to MATLAB. In this first example, 
I'm going to show the free uncontrolled response of the rotary pendulum in MATLAB. I'm just simply stepping through the different sections and in this first section we see the parameters, the coordinates, velocities that I define so I can compute the kinematic and potential energies which are then plugged into the system Lagrangian. And then with the Euler Lagrange tool I can compute the symbolic description of the differential equation and more importantly since I want to solve this numerically as well the Euler Lagrange tool also outputs the MATLAB script and the Simulink block that represent the differential equation. So I execute this and in the next section I can then take the symbolic description or rather the MATLAB script called rotary pendulum underscore ODE, the differential equation in MATLAB script form, and use it with ODE 4.5, a standard integrator in MATLAB, to numerically solve the differential equation. And here you see I have created the plot that plots the time history of the state vector, including the angles alpha and beta, and the angle velocities alpha dot and beta dot. Now, since I have solved the differential equation, I can now take the solution in the next section and plug it into a virtual reality model using Simulink 3D Animation Toolbox to show an animation of the rotary pendulum. Since this is the free uncontrolled response without considering friction terms, the pendulum swings back and forth until the simulation stops. In the second example, I show the controlled response of the rotary pendulum in a typical Simulink block diagram. Simulink is a graphical block diagram based modeling environment, so it gives you a very nice visual perspective of the system and its components. The most important block in this model is the one here in the center. It contains the differential equation of the rotary pendulum. If you open up the block, you see this is simply a MATLAB script that runs in the background. And this block was created with the Lagrange tool that I have shown before. The differential equation is integrated with this integrator block and the solution is then fed into the formatting block which simply backs out the rotation angles alpha and beta. The angles are then fed into a virtual reality block and also fed back into the controller. Which in this case is a nonlinear energy based controller that takes care of the swing up of the pendulum. So I'm opening up the Simulink 3D Animation Virtual Reality window and what you see here is very similar to the video we showed at the beginning of the webinar. This is in fact a CAD import from SOLIDWORKS and I can now run the simulation by pushing the run button and you see the pendulum is swinging up just like in the video And again, for the first phase, for the swing up, we use the energy-based nonlinear controller. And then once the pendulum is close to the inverted unstable equilibrium position, the control logic switches over to the linear state-based controller. So this is the traditional approach using MATLAB and Simulink. How does this look like on your side, Sebastian, when using Sim Mechanics? It will be very similar but the main focus shifts to other design goals. As we have seen, you need to derive the kinematics equation first and then transform them into the corresponding differential representations applying different intermediate steps. What if you could spare this time and focus on other aspects of your project? What if you could avoid potential errors when deriving equations by hand? Sim Mechanics includes all this within one physical modeling environment, allowing you to shift your attention to system behavior and deployment. Having explained the basic principles of Sim Mechanics, I would like to illustrate them using some examples. 
The sim mechanics model you see here is embedded into Simulink. Simulink is a block diagram environment for multi-domain simulation and model-based design. Now let me explain how easy it is to model physical systems using this approach. At the left side of the model I clustered blocks configuring our local solver and certain mechanical aspects. Here I'll explain a bit about the world frame block. If you think about differential equations of motion as a physicist, the world frame block will simply disallow motion in this point. From the mathematician's point of view, the boundary conditions are given as zero. Gravitational effects are included in the mechanism configuration blocks and are active for our simulation. After configuring our system, we might want to add some bodies or solids to our system. Let's take the base of our pendulum as an example and explore its possible properties. A body is defined by its geometry. Here I've chosen a flat cylinder. You might choose a sphere, brick or any other customizable shape. You can import common export formats from CAD systems as STL and step files easily. The inertia influences the motion of the system. It is possible to derive it automatically from the geometry and configure it as a point mass or customize it individually and take full control of the body's inertia matrix. Lastly, the graphics of the solid can be altered as well, for example color and transparency. As we see in our model, the cylinder block is connected to the world frame. Let's recall that the boundary conditions are given so that the system will not move. We attach a pin to the top of our cylinder base by adding a rigid transformation block. In this case, a simple translation along the positive z-axis is required. Also here you can choose from other methods such as Cartesian or cylindrical coordinate transformation. If it is necessary to use more complex transformations or you simply decide to go for rotations, you can rotate along specific axes or apply 3D rotation matrices. In education this block may be helpful to demonstrate how coupled rotations and translations interact. Visualizing different transformation sequences also helps the understanding of the commutative law, since it's very simple to change the block arrangement. Now let's do a quick evaluation of our current system. From our ongoing discussion we came to the conclusion that the system is static and that our pin is attached to the top of the base. The visualization which popped up gives us a clear indicator that we have configured everything properly. This means we can go on to include some dynamics in the pendulum by introducing two degrees of freedom. We already know that the inverted pendulum requires two rotations, one along the horizontal and one along the vertical axis. Adding a revolute joint introduces one rotational degree of freedom around the z-axis to the model. If required, the revolute joint is able to output the current angle and angular velocity as a physical signal. This means the signal carries a unit, helping to avoid potential errors, such as conducting addition of velocity with torque. The converter block transforms the physical to a simulink signal to use it in the standard simulink domain. Here this is shown with a scope block for visualization of the results. You see down here we use simulink signals, where here we use simscape signals. After this short introduction, you should feel more familiar with the remaining blocks. They are just some transformations connected to solids. One more degree of freedom is appended for the pendulum itself. Since no friction is involved, we can observe an undamped oscillation, which is in line with our expectations. Now we quickly check our scope to get another representation of the pendulum's motions. In our case for beta, the angular velocity of beta, as well as alpha and the derivative of alpha. So far we have modeled the basic framework of our pendulum, providing us the opportunity to add more complex effects and dependencies whenever necessary. For this demonstration, I would like to increase the complexity on the one hand and improve the accuracy on the other. 
We'll illustrate this by importing CAD data into Sim Mechanics. Keep in mind, we want to build a sufficiently precise plant model to create and tune our controllers in a later step. This brings us closer to the hardware implementation we saw in the introduction video. We can now test our energy-based swing-up and proportional state controller together with our CAD-based plant model. Taking a closer look at our plant model, we recognize a lot of similarities and many blocks have been introduced previously. Also the amount of states and degrees of freedom are the same. Some small adaptions have been made to the SOLIDWORKS CAD import to give us a better look and increased usability. To introduce friction to the system, I've added some new blocks written in Simscape, which I attach to the Revolut joint on the right. Simscape is a physical modeling language, which allows you to create your own blocks using your own equations. In this case, I used a predefined block which introduces complex correlations between different friction effects. They can be influenced by the shown parameter set. As before, I would like to get a feeling for the system's behavior and match it to my design expectations by running a simulation. This is really great, because it gives me direct feedback of the current implementation status. Now we need to activate the controller as well, to enable the swing up. One small remark about the hardware implementation. Currently, our software implementation is very ideal regarding sensor noise. Since our sensors have significant drift rates in real life, we embedded a state machine to reset sensor states at well-known conditions. In the Mechanics Explorer on the right, we can now observe all our imported components interacting with the controller. Our controller did a pretty good job during the swing-up phase. Also, the stabilization in the upright position is very encouraging with only a small control effort. We see that our simple prototype gave us a good feeling and understanding of the underlying dynamics of our rotating inverted pendulum. As I promised, we didn't spend a lot of time on deriving kinematic equations either for the complex or for the simpler model. Moreover, it became clear that increasing complexity step by step using model based design is a well established approach to increase modeling speed and eliminate systematic error sources. So it seems like it's very simple to change the model in Simscape. For example, to make it more complex by adding a motor. Indeed. It's very simple to change and add parts. So far we have created a plant and a controller model. Maybe it's time now to expand the model with a simple DC motor by introducing an intermediate component. Currently our control algorithm returns a torque, which is a newton millimeter. We would like to control the voltage of the Lego motor, since this means controlling the motor's torque indirectly. Let's see if we can use a built-in example DC motor and adapt it for our objective. The orange block in the middle represents the DC motor. The electrical domain consists of a resistance and an inductance. An electromechanical converter couples friction and inertia physically to the electrical domain. I took this example motor as a basis for some further developments and interface adoptions. In the middle you still find our orange DC motor block. From an interfacing point of view, I just connected the electrical part to a controlled voltage source. The torque sensor is introduced on the mechanical side, providing the torque to our plant model. To keep the gains of our control algorithm unchanged, I inserted a correction gain. This is valid since the motor has a linear behavior, which offsets the input coming from the controller. Now we are ready to use this block in our plan controller model and observe how the system behaves. Please keep in mind that physical signals combine a value with a unit. As mentioned already, we need to change the motor input from newton millimeter to volt. The motor output on the right side was already set to newton millimeter. If everything was set up correctly, the system should swing up and stabilize in the upright position. How about going into the other direction to simplify the system? For example, removing a bar. This is possible. 
To remove a bar, you can either remove the block or you just comment it out. Moreover, you can also remove a degree of freedom by deleting the Revolut joint block. There are multiple possibilities you can use to make your physical system simpler or more complex. We talked about adaptations in my setup, but what about your approach, Misha? How easily can I change settings or dynamics in your simulation? So with the traditional approach, it is not as straightforward as it is in sim mechanics because we have to go all the way back to square one. You have to go through the entire analysis process again to find the new differential equation that describes the system. However, in terms of simplifying the system, there are a couple of neat things you can do, and for that I'm going to switch back over to MATLAB. We start again with deriving the differential equation of the rotary pendulum system using the R Lagrange tool. And now, as a thought experiment, we could ask ourselves the following. What happens if we let the moment of inertia of the arm go to infinity while at the same time we set alpha dot equal to zero? Remember, alpha is the rotation angle of the arm. If you think this through, you come to the conclusion that we get back the equation of motion of the regular standard pendulum because you essentially pin the arm, you hold it in place, and you let the pendulum do whatever it does. You can compute this simplification in MATLAB, just like on pen and paper, with two symbolic commands. First, take the limit and then substitute alpha dot by zero. And we will get, as a result, the differential equation of the standard pendulum. One thing you notice is that instead of a negative sine beta, we get a positive sine beta. And this is because the angle is measured from the upright position and not, as usual, from the hanging position. You can fix this by performing a coordinate transformation. And in addition, we do a Taylor series expansion to see what happens if you only look at small oscillations. If you do all this, you in fact obtain the well-known differential equation of the standard mathematical pendulum. One of the things that is important for students is that they get immediate feedback on a task or problem they have completed. In other words, is the solution I have obtained correct or is it not? A very quick and easy way to get feedback is by creating a plot of the results. As an example, we see here two different plots of the rotation angles alpha and beta of the rotary pendulum. One plot is correct, the other one is not. Sebastian, based on the plots, are you able to tell which one is correct and which one is not? Well, it's really difficult to see the difference between the two plots. I would probably say the right one is correct. But I have to tell you, I always have difficulties with left and right. Seriously? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> but you would say the plot on the right is the correct one. Yes. Well, let's see. I've created two animations straight out of Simulink 3D animation. The video on the right corresponds to the right plot and the video on the left to the left plot. Now, based on the video, what would you say? Which one is the correct one? Left or right? Seeing the system in action and moving, it's looking more natural on the left side. This means the right side was probably not the best choice. Yes, that's correct. And this is why animations can be really helpful to get a feeling for the dynamics of a system, how the system behaves and moves, and for students to get quick feedback. Now, from within MATLAB and Simulink, you can use Simulink 3D animation to create exactly these kinds of animations. To show you just how simple it is to create an animation, I'm going to open up the Simulink 3D animation VR block. I push the block parameters button and then to edit the virtual reality model, I select the edit button. So we can actually see I make the bottom window a bit smaller and I'm opening up the window on the left and in addition I'm going to open up the system model description. 
In the model, you recognize different reference frames. For example, the inertia reference frame N and two more rotating reference frames B and E that are sort of glued to the arm and the pendulum. And that's exactly how you build the VR model. In the VR3, you recognize the inertia reference frame N and then you can add as childs of the N frame the other two frames the B frame is the child of the N frame, and the E frame is in turn a child of the B frame. At the very bottom of this tree, we have the last object, the last member of this model, which is the pendulum itself. This child parent relationship is called inheritance, and this is a very useful property that allows you to create complex VR systems. Inheritance means that a child inherits certain properties of his parent. As an example, if I need to add another object that rotates with and is sort of glued to the pendulum, let's use a box, I simply add the box as a child of the pendulum and thereby the box inherits some of the properties of the pendulum. One such property that is automatically inherited is the rotation angle. As a result, if you rotate the pendulum, the box also rotates exactly alike. It is that easy and straightforward to build models in the 3D World Editor. And once you're done, save the model, you direct it back into the parameter window right here. And in this VRML tree directory, you can now check and uncheck all those boxes that each correspond to a parameter that you can now actuate from the outside, in this case from Simulink. For our model, we have two parameters, the two rotation angles, alpha and beta. This is all you need to do to control a Simulink 3D animation VR model from within Simulink or MATLAB. All right, how do you create animations in Simscape, Sebastian? Let's switch back to our simple pendulum. We used it before to demonstrate the basic principles of sim mechanics. Right now I would like to use it to demonstrate an easy and convenient way to visualize your system. I briefly introduced the mechanics explorer earlier. Now I want to demonstrate some nice features. Of course it's possible to rotate, pan and zoom in or out or even set different viewpoints. These are things you might already know from CAD systems or other tools. But what I really like is the interaction with the parts. In this case, I selected the rotary arm. This will highlight the solid, but also bring up the frame defining the component. Here your solid is aligned along the local x-axis. You can also explore the properties of this block, for example geometry, inertia and graphics. You can also select the world frame or the mechanism configuration to set up gravitational effects. Back to our rotary arm. You can hide this block and run the simulation again. We see that the block is hidden, but the system dynamics did not change. This is very handy if some parts are hidden or visually blocked. Instead of hiding just one part, it is also possible to hide everything, except for a certain amount of parts. During development, it can be very helpful to show the center of gravity. In our case, we have two centers. You might wonder, why just two, if we have more solids than that? The reason is, there are two degrees of freedom, which sim mechanics assembles internally. This is why we only see the resulting two centers of gravity for our moving parts. Another option in the mechanics viewer is to show all directly and indirectly defined coordinate frames. If you want to share the animation with friends or colleagues, you can create video files too. There are even more possibilities for you to discover within Sim Mechanics and its visualization. 
we have seen some useful Simscape and Sim Mechanics features and provided you with important insights. This was a lot for you to cover. So maybe we better sum everything up. What do you think, Misha? Absolutely. So what I really appreciate about the traditional modeling approach is that it is open and accessible in the sense that you can always have access to the system equations. You can change and adapt them, and therefore you always know precisely what is happening under the hood. As far as teaching is concerned, the focus is probably more on the modeling side itself and less on application. And one thing to keep in mind, creating animations comes at some extra cost. However, I would say that the learning curve on how to use Simulink 3D animation with both MATLAB and Simulink is pretty steep. With Simmechanics, we have seen that no equations were necessary, making the approach slightly less transparent. In Simmechanics, it's not possible to rewrite or create your own custom blocks, but you can easily change the system behavior. However, through the interaction with customizable Simscape components and the Simscape language, it is possible to account for this inability to create custom blocks in Sim Mechanics. We should also remind ourselves that the focus of Sim Mechanics is to smoothly create applications, for example, planned models for control design. One big advantage is the built-in animation, saving you a lot of time and providing instant feedback. Nevertheless, you need to familiarize with this new approach and have a good understanding of the basics of the system. This means Misha's approach is a very nice one if you are beginning to learn about multibody simulations, while sim mechanics is best used with some amount of pre-knowledge. Alright, so if we capture this message in a single graph, looking at a typical engineering curriculum, I would say starting in the first semesters with math and physics, intra-level engineering, where you work a lot with pen and paper and equations, the traditional modeling approach is probably most applicable and the way to go. In later semesters, as you get more familiar and experienced, the FISMOD tool chain can be tremendously helpful. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree on this one. I agree with you on the basic concept but I made some slight adoptions to your slide. To me, introduction to engineering sounds like a good opportunity to use FISMOD. I think students can experiment very easily with certain system dynamics here. In the end, they gain a feeling for this physical domain without having to dive too deep into the underlying math. Maybe they can even start to build a simple inverted pendulum themselves. Okay, I see. So in other words, especially in the first semesters, when students have only limited computing skills, this mod examples and Simscape can be very powerful for demonstrations and for students to experiment with pre-built models. Before we let you go and wrap up with this presentation, we're going to show you what exactly you need to run all the demos you have seen today by yourself. First of all, you need a LEGO Mindstorms platform either NXT or EV3, and then the corresponding complementary Harbor support package, which you can easily get through the MATLAB editor. If you go to the top tool strip to the far right, you find the add-ons button that guides you through the installation process. Of course, you need MATLAB, Simulink, and all the other toolboxes, and last not least, the software models and the documentation that you can find nicely packaged on FileExchange. FileExchange is our community support website where you find blogs, software models, and much more. On MATLAB Central or on FileExchange directly, simply go to the search text box and type in Rotary Pendulum Bundle and you find all the presentation models you've seen today. You also find the Euler-Lagrange tool, which we have used excessively to derive differential equations for MATLAB and Simulink. Download the zip materials and run them instantaneously on your system. This brings us to the end of this webinar. Sebastian, thanks for joining. Thanks, Misha. It has been a great pleasure. And to all of you out there, thank you very much for tuning in. 
This is Sebastian Malak and Misha Kim from MathWorks Germany.